Denise. And I'm Donna. And this is Coffee Time. <laughs> you know, sometimes in our lives, we have adversities that we have to overcome. We have to just go over that mountaintop, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. get there. Uh, things that happen to us. Mm -hmm. And when things happen to us, mm -hmm. we have to know how to handle them. Mm -hmm. be strong mm -hmm. you know and this particular author movie producer his name is Mike Anderson mm -hmm. and the book we'll be talking about is a polished soul but until we get there <laughs> how was your weekend oh guys I got a first <laughs> um, my weekend was pretty good but I'm really excited because on Facebook, we have this thing that Coffee Time is doing is um, a water challenge, which is eight bottles a day of water. Mm -hmm. And so basically, you know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's good for you because it does things like, it, you know, it, it, it cleanses you out, makes you feel better, energy. And it's the first. Or you can gain a lot of water, become water weight. Yeah, okay. But it's good for you. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's also why we say you, you should eat well, mm -hmm. so that it can bring all the and then exercise out. and all those other mm -hmm. things too. Mm -hmm. But what I like about it is that a bunch of folks actually sent in their picture mm -hmm. drinking water. Ooh -hoo. Ooh -hoo. Ooh -hoo. So I think it's cool. And I got her. No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> we won't talk about that. <laughs> I got her to drink some water too, mm -hmm. and so I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited about it. I'm pretty proud about it too because it just seems like it's actually really taking off. So, you know, if you want to join us a little bit more and you know let us know how you feel about drinking water and stuff, go ahead and you know give us some feedback and, and send in your information. So you can you can reach us on our Facebook, yeah, which is TBC Coffee Time. You can also reach us at on our website, mm -hmm. <laughs> chat with two G's <laughs> dot com. So it's pretty cool. I like it. Yeah, yeah. You look mighty spiffy today, Dave. Thank you. You know, I got that little brown color tone thing. Yeah, I got a little brown up in there. Uh, I'm coordinating. Yeah. <laughs> Was it a special occasion today? <sighs> Speak up. <laughs> Let them know. <laughs> no, 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 no. I just felt okay. like I was gonna wear my little poncho today, you know, bring back in the 70s, you know. I used to love some ponchos back in the 70s. Did, yes, you did. Mm -hmm. Yes, you did. Mm -hmm. And so did I. Yeah, because you I would take a flip them over. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. Well, listen, guys, we're gonna be coming back. And when we come back, we're gonna talk a little bit, and you're gonna see a little clip on this gentleman. And Donna. Okay? <laughs> Mr. Mike Anderson. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Big guy. Huge. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> Welcome. We got a special treat. We got Mike Anderson here. He is spoken word, author, indie movie producer. That's me. That's right. That's him. <laughs> That's me, Mike Anderson. What's going on, everybody? How y'all doing out there in TV land? It's definitely an honor and a pleasure to be right here at Coffee Time. And uh, yeah, we got some great coffee going on over here. <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed mm -hmm. it. Because you know you got to have coffee at Coffee Time. Definitely right? got to have coffee at Coffee Time. <laughs> definitely, definitely. <laughs> well... I kind of want to jump right into it because you got a lot going on. You got your your book that you just published, which I think is awesome, mm -hmm. Thank and you so it's much. it's uh, turning into a what Hollywood movie? A Hollywood movie actually. Got oh so my like goodness! A, uh, you know you got to tell us about that. <laughs> yeah. So um, this is pretty much my autobiography. It's entitled "A Polished Soul: The Mike Ray Anderson Story," and it's based on my life story. I'm a former death penalty offender that served 17 years on a life sentence. Um, I was originally facing the death penalty plus life, plus mm -hmm. 60 years in 1991 in the Cumberland County Jail in Fayetteville, North Carolina. And a lot of that had to do with the fact that, you know, my upbringing, I grew up in a domestic violence plagued household. My father was a former African-American Vietnam vet that actually was PTSD diagnosed, mm -hmm. but never counseled for it 
when he came back from the war. So a lot of that behavior within himself actually escalated to, you know, irrational behaviors where he would <clears throat> pretty much beat my mother every day and pretty much uh, beat me and my brothers every day. And it came, got so crazy at one time that he literally like went into this um, frantic state of mind to where if, if anybody ever knows anything about Fayetteville, it's right next to Fort Bragg, one mm -hmm. of the biggest army bases. So he was pretty much like, uh, there was the simulated bomb stuff that was going on, simulated bombing. And then before you know it, he snapped back into the state of mind like he was in war. So he held us at gunpoint. And when he held us at gunpoint, we pretty much uh, had to go to a domestic violence shelter for a whole summer. You know, a whole bunch of things was happening in the household. One thing led to another, and before you know it, into my teen years, I chose to go into the streets. I started selling drugs, was selling guns, and before you know it, by 1990, uh, I was in the Cumberland County Jail for a crime that I did not commit, it was a murder, and I had sold the gun on the case. So they wanted me to confess you know, to who I sold the gun to. I never opened my mouth, so what happened was I ended up making bond and got out two days later. But while I got out, I was still making the craziest choices in the world. You know, this is a testimony for you youth out there that think mm -hmm. the streets are where it's at. Mm -hmm. I was making the craziest choices in the world. And then I ended up getting caught up in an altercation that escalated to a gun a shootout where I was protecting my friend and my, my best friend in my life. And then before you know it, I ended up shooting somebody, well, shooting two people. One guy died and one didn't. So they locked me right back up for murder again and attempted murder. And before you know it, I was facing the death penalty plus life plus 60 years. I waited in the Cumberland County Jail for like three years. I took a plea bargain for life and ended up serving 17 years on that life sentence. But while I was on the inside, I turned my whole life around. I got two college degrees, wrote several books, uh, spearheaded several programs for the youth. Uh, I was an inmate peer counselor. I was a GED tutor and changed my life around to the point to where I became a model inmate. And so the North Carolina Parole Board said, we're going to give you another chance. And it'll let me go, and here I am. Um, I got released 2008 on Mother's Day, one of the best Mother's Day gifts you know, ever wow. for my mom. And here I am seven, seven years later, releasing my autobiography based on all the things that I've done since I've been home also. And you know, my whole life story just pretty much is something that catches people in awe. So, you mm -hmm. know, it's just one of those things where it's, 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 it's about my life. Mm -hmm. And in a nutshell, it's the blueprint of coming from so much struggle and then rising up. Wow. I mean, that that story in itself, I mean, that you just told me all that that, you know, what you gone through and the choices that you made, but the choices that you're making now yes. is actually taking your life in a whole nother direction. And like you said before, this is a testimony for the children out there because there are a lot of kids out there that believe because of their situation, that's the choice that they have to make. And so it's a beautiful thing when you can, you can write about it and you can tell people and you can educate people. So I, I, think, that's, I think that's awesome and, you know, um, I just want to say this. I think that what you're doing is a great thing. I love your book and the fact that it's becoming a movie, that all of, out of yes. all of that is becoming a movie. And if you can, when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> talk about a person who has uh, actually turned herself around. Yeah. You know? criminal justice system, mm -hmm. actually let them have it the first time, mm -hmm. come back mm -hmm. again, mm -hmm. second chance, mm -hmm. get out there, and he's turning himself around. Mm -hmm. He's overcoming the obstacles, mm -hmm. you know, having that second chance. Mm -hmm. How many people actually have a second chance or are willing to give somebody a second chance? Yeah. That's, Not that's really it. Are you willing, mm -hmm. you know? to be a part of somebody's life, to help them, you know. Um, when you heard his story about how he turned himself around, how, how was it feeling for you? Well, the first thing I did is I listened to what he was saying. Mm -hmm. And he was talking about, of course, like we were talking about before, his struggles, mm -hmm. um, his childhood, and then I, I, I felt I felt that he you know he really 
really was trying to make a difference. He from really, his heart. From his heart. You mm -hmm. know, I felt this from him. And I like the fact that he said that when he talks about the book, he said he, he wrote this book for, the, for other people to look at this book, to, to understand. Yeah, you know, having that struggle. And, you know, and so he, he's pretty much saying, look at my life as an example and mm -hmm. see what I went through. And you don't have to go through the same road. And see where I'm going. Exactly. And see where I'm going. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, the man wrote a book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, mm -hmm. got his two college degrees. Yeah. 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 I mean, dealt with the, the criminal justice system. I mean, everything. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, a lot of people have done this, don't get me wrong, a lot of people have done this, mm -hmm. but um, this man put it out there for you. You know, uh, when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about how he overcame his struggles and where he went from there. Oh, yeah. Okay? <laughs> Thank you. We're back, and we were just discussing your book right here. So I want you to tell us a little bit about this book, how it came to be, what's going on with it, and everything, everything. <laughs> well, the book is pretty much a blueprint. Um, as I said earlier, it's all based on my life story and what I went through. A former death penalty offender that served 17 years of a life sentence. Um, you definitely want to find out what it's all about. The blueprint itself, it talks about the struggle, then it talks about the downfall, but then it talks about the rise coming out of the pit of the downfall. And I think a lot of people nowadays don't realize that, you know, you can, you can struggle in just about any way possible. You know, there's so many different ways and variations that you can struggle. But one of the biggest ways that you can struggle is to know what your struggle is all about. And I knew my struggle was all about my choices. I held myself accountable and responsible for my own choices mm -hmm. that I made in spite of the fact that I grew up in such a harsh household and environment, my neighborhood. And one of the things is that I want everybody to have a chance, especially the brothers and sisters that are incarcerated, to read this book and see that you can come back just from anything. You know, I was deemed and doomed to never come home. They said I would never come home, but I ended up making it home by becoming a model inmate and changing my mind on the inside to become a better person and equip myself for what I thought would be a journey ahead of me. So now, I mean, you know, the book is called A Polished Soul. That means that your soul was polished and you came back from something. You know, this concept that I have for my nonprofit organization, which is Polished Souls Foundation Incorporated, is every diamond in the rough is a soul that deserves to be polished. And that concept and tagline is based on the fact that, you know, if you think about diamond, it's formed in black coal. That can be your darkness, that can be your struggle. Right. But when the pressure attacks it from all sides, it creates this beautiful faceted diamond. And it could be peer pressure, it can be environmental pressure, it can be social pressure, it can be your own pressure that you put on yourself. And you know, I want this book to convey the message of coming back even from the deepest pits. You know, some people may feel like, hey, you've been through hell, but you can come back from hell. Mm -hmm. You can come back and come back stronger, much more vibrant, and more equipped with the opportunity to become somebody that contributes to society. Wow. Wow. I mean, that that's something else. And I, I like the fact that you call it a polish show because, like you were saying, you can come back from whatever you're going through. And there's a lot of there's a lot of young minds, even older minds that just sometimes they can't see that, you exactly. know, and um, and I, I know you kind of touch bases on it. But I mean, what kind of advice that can you give like somebody that just they can't see what their future can be because they can only see what's happened to them right now. Well, one of the things that I always try to encourage to make sure that you live in the moment and live in the moment with a productive state of mind, not an idle state of mind, because as you know, the cliche is an idle, you know, uh, idle mind is a devil workshop. Mm -hmm. But I would say that live in the moment with a productive state of mind and know that there's a better future for you out there in spite of what people may have told you when you were coming up. A lot of our youth are not. They don't have life spoken into them. And one of the things that I do with my youth, with my organization, is I speak life into them and say, hey, you know, I have a lot of adjudicated youth in my program. Armed robbery charges, 
major assault charges and some of them have even had murder charges and they were in school with beacons around their ankle for house arrest. Mm -hmm. So I always have a tendency to speak life into them and say, yo, regardless of what you're coming from, you know, regardless of what you've been through, you can always make it out a better person. Mm -hmm. You know, your, your, your future is not doomed to be the most negative future in the world. You can have the brightest future in the world in spite of what you've gone through. But the only way that you can do it is to change your mindset. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Or as a woman thinketh in her, her heart, so is she. And that's the message that I always try to convey. And with the book, The Polished Souls, I mean, you have to think about it. <laughs> I said what I was going through, and I said what I went through, but now look where life is, you know? Mm -hmm. And the fact that this life story itself is out there and was selected to become a Hollywood movie, I mean, that lets you know that there's somebody that feels like this story should be told on a much more broader level. Yeah, and I'm glad that you brought that up too because you got quite a few people that are backing you up that e they even wrote in your book, um, could you name it? talking about the celebrity reviews? Yeah, yeah. 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 So you, Christopher Play Martin from Kid and Play, we got Shaw Jackson who used to play Nisi on Moesha, now she's with the Hollywood Divas show, mm -hmm. and then um, Hawthorne James who plays Red in the Five Heartbeats. They all gave celebrity reviews on this book. Um, they read it before it was really, really released and, and the life story just overwhelmed them. Wow. And, um, okay, I know that it is so much. I'm, like, loving that you're here. Real fast, who's going to be playing you in the movie? Well, there's been talks, if you think about it. Uh, you know what? I think I'll save that for the next segment. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Girl, I mean, mm -hmm. two college degrees. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. You know? And uh, could you understand when he said that they said that they were wavering on um, making a book? Mm -hmm. He said, oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> and then they started wavering on the money. Mm -hmm. You know, we need a budget. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? He what you a think budget. that two college degrees meant, baby? <laughs> <laughs> He weren't playing. No, <laughs> he not, weren't playing. not one bit, not one bit. Mm -hmm. And then um, how he made it against everyone saying, wait, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, mm -hmm. saying wait. And Donna, I'm just so proud of you. Why? Because the guy's, I can't get over how large he is. Yeah, he's pretty. <laughs> <laughs> My mama said you tall. <laughs> yes, I did. You keep having these doggone visits and talkings without me. How do you do that? Not all. Yeah. Not all the time. Y'all see it. I'm not lying. <laughs> do you see me in there? No. Okay. <laughs> but this one was, I really, like, I, I enjoyed Saeed when we had him here. This one I enjoyed, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. because um, the gentleman is a very tall person, mm -hmm. very large person. <laughs> I don't mean it that way. I mean, well, the gentleman, we people, Mike Anderson, yes, yeah. Mike Anderson. <laughs> God, mm -hmm. Mike, I'm sorry. You're too big for me to mess with, babe. <laughs> I'm so sorry. He's a gentle giant. Gentle and, um, giant. I like I like what he was saying that um, how he described a polished soul. Mm -hmm. How he said that you know he he cleaned it and he shined it and he shined it until it all looks, you know, like coal becoming diamonds. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, and that's what he has <clears throat> done with his children. He has mm -hmm. been a mentor. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, he's been a great mentor for his children, and he. He goes and he speaks to them and he, you know, he, he, he kind of educates them and he, he talks about what he's gone through and, mm -hmm. you know, and he... And letting them know that you can get that second chance. Exactly. And overcoming mm -hmm. obstacles that are standing in your way. Mm -hmm. Listen, guys, we're going to come back with our, with our goodbyes and stuff and we're going to try to wrap it all up for you. Okay? <laughs> See you in a minute. You're going to hear some more. Mm -hmm. Well, this is exciting. So we're going to talk about the book turning into a movie. And so kind of explain how that whole process is going about. Well, I had a few relationships with some people that were actually out of um, Hollywood and great people, great people. Uh, Tank Jones, who played in Three Kings and is an actor director himself. And also Harvey Lowry, who's a major name behind 
shows like the case of Benjamin Button, mm -hmm. um, Transformers Avengers, all sorts of stuff. But these young men were very interested in the story and I had met them while they were actually giving me some behind the scenes exposure to a movie they were shooting entitled Union Bound. And when they heard about the story, they was like, well, hey, look, let's see if we can develop it into a script once it was released. I said, you know what? I went and sat down and wrote that script myself. <laughs> I, said, I said, let me make this work. It's like, wait a minute here. You know, once in a lifetime chance. So when they said, well, hey, you know, let's, let's think about the budget. I said, okay. I went down and wrote this budget myself. I sat down for eight hours in front of the computer, you know, computing all the numbers, punching all the numbers in and making sure we could figure out how to create a good budget for this. Mm -hmm. So once we came into fruition, that they was like, hey, yeah, let's do this. Let's roll. Uh, we got this movie deals that's get ready to pop off. So we'll definitely fund it. I mean, it was a beautiful surprise. And then after that, I had a meeting with the person that can possibly be paying, uh, playing me. And um, mm -hmm. I, if you think about it, hey, I'm, I'm biracial. I'm born in Germany, grew up in Fayetteville. I used to rap. So who does that sound like? You got it, J. Cole. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so yeah, I had a meeting. You had me like. <laughs> you couldn't get any more parallel than that. I mean, you know, me and him were, were just like, you got two of the same people, but one went one direction and I went in the other direction. So when I had a brief meeting with him about it, he was like excited about it. And so, you know, that's, that's on the table. But there's other people that's involved with the movie that wants to get involved with the project. Uh, <laughs> we've even approached Charlie Murphy about possibly playing my father. Charlie Murphy. Yeah, so that would be his I first serious that. role, you know, of course. <laughs> Charlie <laughs> Murphy, Charlie Murphy. <laughs> everything's negotiable, everything's negotiable, of course, but uh, you know, it's, it's, it's something that we feel like is gonna turn, turn out fabulous and something that goes into a different state of, of what we call economical background and explains the story. And it goes from the fall to the redemption, as we spoke about. And again, you know, uh, I want to put my story out there to make sure that people learn from me and my life and my mistakes and to become an example. Wow. Well, again, that was amazing. I'm excited. I'm excited that Jacob... Now, <clears throat> <laughs> so... Um, Who's playing your wife or whatever? Or well, that's that's not, that's going to be a short role that's at the end because my wife, of course, you know, she came towards the end of my prison sentence. Uh, I met her before I came home, but we didn't start dating until, you know, months after I came home. And but uh, there's there's a few people that we have in mind that uh, really looks like her and <laughs> has her demeanor. And then, of course, you know, depending on how far we go into the movie, you know, that's going to be questionable as well. But the script it's pretty much the redemption story itself. Right. So, um, but one of the things that uh, we're, we're trying to make sure that we focus on is, is great development of the story and to tell this story and to show every bit of the drama that happened in my life from age six all the way to now. And that's, that's what we're trying to do. And we feel like that when we can tell that story with this, with this movie. So that's our aim to do. And uh, the book is actually available on Amazon. You can get it in <laughs> Hollow Soul, the Mike Ray Anderson story. And it's also available paperback and Kindle e-copy edition. And if you want to, you can go to Barnes and Nobles. If they don't have it on the bookshelf, they'll definitely order it for you. <laughs> <laughs> and this is my gift to you all. Yes, so I'm very excited it. about that. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Well, I want to thank you so much for stopping by Coffee Time. Uh, thank you for your, having me. Your story was um, amazing, and I'm glad that you shared it with us. Thank so, you so much. Yeah. Thank you for having me yeah. here. And as usual, you can't have Coffee Time without good coffee. There you go. <laughs> what is this? Is this Colombian? Mm, um, you know what? My mama mixed it. Oh, wow. Good job, mama. <laughs> As you can see, one mistake doesn't determine the rest of your life. That's right. Yeah, so I would have to say all that he's been through and what he's going through right now and what he and where he's be gone, you know. Where he's going. <laughs> yeah. He's going. Um, like making a movie. Yes. A out of this hot book. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty Kudos, cool. baby. Pretty cool. And he said he had J. Cole that's going to play him, which he said that J. Cole's a rapper. He's a rapper. The junior. Yeah. I heard him. <laughs> yes, I did. We all heard him. Yes, yes, yes. So I think that's pretty cool. So I said kudos for that. I can't wait to see that Hollywood movie, you know. The little red carpet thing going. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> I heard you say, who can play your wife? 
Who gonna play with <laughs> I heard you. I don't know. I, I think that um, we'll be pleasantly surprised for who's gonna play his wife. Mm -hmm. And she's beautiful too. His wife is so beautiful. He's got a beautiful family. <laughs> so, now, you know what? Congratulations to everyone who has overcome their hurdles has had that second chance and took advantage of it. Mm -hmm. You know, congratulations to Mr. Mike and I keep wanting to call you Michael Anderson. Mike Anderson, congratulations <laughs> to this book. Great job. For mentoring the children, letting them know that you appreciate them and that you're letting them just go over that, over that coffee cup, come on. I saw you drinking out of my coffee cup, by the way. I just wanted to tell you about that. Mm -mm. Yes, I did. I just wanted to tell you about that. You think I wasn't going to say nothing. I told you, Mike. Congratulations, darling. And may you have many, many more books and movies mm -hmm. in the future. You here? We're saying goodbye from coffee time. Goodbye. Have a great day, guys. Be breaking all your windows, get up your door.